and welcome to Beyond Reproach. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tux. We don't have listener mail for you guys this episode, but we are announcing the topic for next month's mini-sode. True story. We are. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about anxiety and stress management and self-care under our current administration. Yes, self-care is very important. A survey by the American Psychiatric Association found that anxiety more than doubled between 2017 and 2018. So it's not all in our head, you guys. It's not. 39% of people reported feeling more anxiety compared to 19% the year prior. Women are more anxious than men. Millennials are the most anxious generation. But baby boomers, surprisingly, had the greatest increase in anxiety from 2017 to 2018. Wow. Yeah, crazy. So the study doesn't chart anything deep demographically speaking um, in regard to people who are targeted most by this administration in rhetoric, policy, and actual violence. But I would guess that immigrants, the disabled, LGBTQ, Jewish people, people of color, or anyone at the many intersections of these groups are especially feeling more anxious and depressed. I know that I am. I know that Tux is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, The good news is that we aren't alone. We aren't imagining it, so we're not going crazy. This level of anxiety will have an end date, and we just need to keep taking care of ourselves so we can stay angry, stay connected, and stay whole in the process of fighting the good fight. 100%. I think a lot of people's anxiety comes from living under an administration that is doing so much harm to so many people. And also feels so unpredictable and erratic. I think the lack of control is really what what gets under people's... Yeah, there's a really good bit about this. It's just Google horse loose in a hospital. hospital. (laughs) Yes, it's so so funny. It's it's a parody of what we're living through right now. It's spot on. Yeah, so like Stephanie said, you know, I know I'm not the only one. She's not the only one. There's actually been a ton of articles in the past couple years about self-care and stress management. There's been so many articles, like pages and pages. And this wasn't a thing under the previous administration in the way that it is now. And I think a lot of that has to do with the reasons that people were upset with the past administration versus the reasons that they're upset with the current administration. I think the reasons before were a little bit more superficial. Yeah. It had more to do with skin color. (laughs) Literally superficial. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 100%. And I feel like now people are upset because really, really horrible things are being done. Yeah. And it's different. As much as you can say that I'm a conservative and I support this or I didn't support the previous whatever, yeah, I, didn't I want think there's a huge for difference. All. Yeah. It's not just policy. There's a very... It's a different tone, definitely. Well, it's not just a different tone, but it's a completely different way of doing things yeah. in a way that's really... Um, regressive. Yeah. Regressive and scary. Yeah. I think there's a lack of stability. I've always had some issues with anxiety. And like even when I was a kid, I used to have panic attacks in high school and stuff. But I think over the years, I've learned a lot more about managing my own stress and, and how to identify stress. And I've also sort of moved into a a less stressful position at work recently. But since the new administration, my my anxiety levels have gone much higher, despite the fact that I'm better at identifying and managing my own stress. Yeah. So we just want to talk about how to handle stress in the current era. How to keep ourselves okay during this administration. Yeah, how to be okay, basically. I, like Tux, have suffered from anxiety it's mostly depression with me. It's, it's a mix, but it's mostly depression. And it usually manifests in tears, inexplicable tears, um, weight gain, a lack of excitement in things that typically bring me joy, like racing. I was really into doing half marathons and triathlons. And since 2016, I haven't done a single one. But I recently just signed up for the Brooklyn half. I'm so excited Ooh. to do that in May. This is my first race in two years. Whoa, three years. Wow. Holy shit, three years. Wow, I need to start running. Um, <laughs> I used to do a lot of journaling. I used to do a lot of yoga. And I'm slowly getting back to them. But whenever I feel anxious or depressed, I start to feel just a lot of ennui, feeling tired, lethargy, it's like just feeling really heavy and just not excited about things that I usually am excited by. I realize how hurtful it is to keep having conversations 
asserting my humanity to people who don't seem to realize they fundamentally don't believe in it. (sighs) In the work setting, I work in corporate America, and I sit around these white women who are just so quick to pull out their, oh, I'm not political card. Oh my God. Every time I bring up something that's remotely political, they're just like, oh no. I feel oh, like, I, oh, I have no empathy for people who don't look like me. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Basically, yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like brown children. The idea what? of privilege is an entire different episode that we could do. True. It. Yeah. You are coming from such a privileged position when you're even able to say that you're yeah. not political. And it's a way for them to shut me down instantly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh, okay. I'm being the angry black woman again. Yeah. Basically, saying I'm not political means that current politics don't affect me enough. Oh, yes. For it oh, to how lucky. need me to be engaged. Yeah, you're right. It's it's. We're gonna have to do another episode about this. But yeah. Self care is important. If I am to keep being gamefully employed. (laughs) So I have a a lot of uh, rituals that I do to keep myself feeling good and feeling like, okay, amidst the chaos. Number one on my list is drinking and bitching with my bestie, (laughs) usually in the form of drag race or pose marathons. Yes! Drinking is fun and and drag culture is everything. Um, It's so much fun. It's, It's such a positive escape from reality. Yeah. Like I always feel better. Always. The wigs... The petty, the, the reeds, everything. <laughs> I mean, Drag Race is unique in reality television because it's so positive. You're right. You're right. It's not negative. It's not messy. You're I mean, not there's tu- a little bit of like producers but you're not picking tun- at people. And- but you're not tuning in to see people at their worst. Totally. The it's like the Great British Bake Off of, of American yes, television. That's what it is. <laughs> it's like therapy, which is the second thing on my list. Yes. Actual therapy and not just Hamilton, the musical. <laughs> therapy with, with a life. Licensed professional, um, the the therapist that I see, she's black and queer, and she sees completely through my my bullshit that I've elaborately constructed. Good for her. And my and good my for me- you. mechanisms. It's yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. I'm not gonna lie. I hate going there. I hate it because she forces me to look at things that I've ignored for sometimes decades. Yeah. She's like, what do you mean? And she's <laughs> like, pulls out all the receipts. I'm like, God damn it. You yeah. were listening. Urgh. I mean, I understand why that, that sucks. It really sucks. But it's also, it's constructive. Yeah, it's constructive. <laughs> Every time I leave, I literally, I say yes, I'm coming back next week. And as I'm leaving, like I'm pressing the elevator button, I'm thinking, okay, next week I'm going to be sick. Just tell her that you're sick. You're sick. Like, oh, allergies. Oh, I feel, I feel sick. Hey, feel- Fever. But then I show up the next week, so. Well, good for you. Uh, yeah. I also found that setting political boundaries is really important. For me, that means not entering into conversations where I have to defend my own humanity or that yeah. of my other fellow humans to people who just fundamentally don't have empathy. I can't teach that to them. So now I just, I wear my headphones I don't talk to people in ways that I don't... Re- I, I do what I need to do, basically. Yeah. Like, I talk to safe people, and I have real conversations with them, but everyone else, like, no, they get they get the swerve. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I mean... I, I don't force it. Like, that's, that's like, number four on my list. Like, I, I try to lean into exactly how I feel. Depression can eat a dick, but it's okay <laughs> to be depressed. It's yeah. okay to feel shitty. Like, you don't have to power through it's okay to be anxious or tired or want to eat large quantities of sugar in my (laughs) case yeah i don't be afraid of your feelings i feel like feel your feelings feel it is okay to feel your feelings it's okay to cry if you need to cry it's okay to scream if you need to scream it's okay to eat a comedic volume of lollipops from your (laughs) local bodega because you just need some mouth pleasure sometimes (laughs) i'm glad that you've embraced sugar again Sugar is keeping me going. When Stephanie and I, first I'm gonna have started, no teeth, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will make I will make all the bunt cakes for you. I love sugar so much. <laughs> when Stephanie and I first started recording this podcast, she was telling me about how she had bought. She was like trying to reduce the amount of sugar in her chocolate, <laughs> and had gone from like seventy percent to seventy two to eighty Slowly to like ninety, myself down. and then finally bought a zero percent sugar, one hundred percent cocoa, one hundred percent cocoa. You guys, I'm like, girl. That is not edible. That yeah. is baking chocolate. That so, is not meant to be put in, in your mouth. In my own defense, Trader Joe's had it with the eaten chocolate, <laughs> not the baking chocolate. That is and fake I, news. I that bought is false it and it was so terrible. Don't ever do this. It one like the smallest morsel 
put in my mouth, <laughs> literally sucked all of the vo- the moisture out of my mouth. It tasted like a vegetable. It was indescribable. Yeah. Don't do it, you guys. Don't it's do not it. meant to be eaten. It just isn't. <laughs> Trader Joe's is full of lies. So, <laughs> yeah, don't force it. Don't add stress. Um, everyone's experience is different. I found that comparing myself to others is, is like just not helpful for me. So I've had to edit my Instagram feed and I've unfollowed yeah. any account that makes me feel something negative. So, yeah, that's a good Yeah. Tip. Because it's like when you're lying around depressed, you don't want to see someone like, you know, eating some gluten free blah, blah, blah on a mountaintop, like, (laughs) you know, doing scorpion pose. Like, it's just you're doing too much, girl. And that's cool for you. But like, I am I am not there with you. And it's making me feel depressed. So I yeah, you can't compare yourself to other people. Yeah. People online are crafting their image. Yes, exactly. They're they're curating curating what they show you. Yes. They're not showing you them at home in their sweatpants, living a regular life, which yeah. is probably 98% of their real life. But yeah, they're showing you the 2%. And sometimes that's not what I want to see. So I've unfollowed these people. Um, another thing that I do as part of my self-care routine is I have all these old lady crafts. <laughs> I knit, I crochet, sometimes I, I press flowers. But I recently started cross-stitching. And it's so fucking I'm, cathartic. I cannot wait to get oh, one of those hoops God. with the... Embroidery hoops. Yeah. Yes. I can't wait. Stabbing something over and over again makes me feel good. Yes. And I'm just going to Which makes leave complete sense. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not uh, the only one. <laughs> yeah. I also like to work out. It's how I'm able to... When I'm feeling depressed, it's how I'm able to trick my mind into thinking that I feel good. And it does feel good, so... I no, and that's good for stress reduction, too, yeah. and anxiety. That's a, yeah. that's something that I do, too, to help reduce anxiety and deal with anxiety, so... Yeah. My last thing is anger. Anger is good. Yeah. You should be angry. You should express your anger. Fuck civility. Fuck it every day, all day. You, F that S. F that S. <laughs> you will get civility from my black ass every... <laughs> Once every child who has been taken from their parents at the border is reunited and given mental health care for life and free college tuition, that's yeah. when you will get civility from me. <laughs> Don't hold your breath is what that's you're saying. That's never happening is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> I do a major no-no when it comes to reducing stress and anxiety. He sure does. I try um, not to judge him. But, um. <laughs> I'm trying to get better at it. And after our last minisode, I definitely will at least stop doing one of these behaviors. Um, I have a tendency to read the comments and I have in the past at least had a tendency to try to engage with trolls. I think it's coming from a place of wanting to understand. I want to understand. I want to try. I want to stay informed. I want to try and see what people with other points of view are saying on certain issues. Yeah, because we're all Americans. Like we should be one. Like I don't think it's healthy for people to be in silos Yeah, all, no, the, no. all the time. Yeah. I think you do have to put yourself in one to protect your mental health sometimes, but maybe not argue with trolls. No, no, no. And I think I, I've learned, especially after our last mini so that like I'm trying to get out there and, and see other points of view and mm-hmm. learn how people are feeling. You know, trolls and people that leave comments on, on liberal think pieces uh-uh. are not... Snowflakes. Are not... These are not logical, intelligent, reasonable people. And they're not trying to have a conversation. Exactly. And they're not, you're not going to educate somebody. Nope. You're not going to change their mind about anything. If that's what you're trying to do, you're reading the comments and engaging with trolls. You're in the wrong place. When the internet sends its people, they're not sending their best. (laughs) It's futile. It's it's a waste of your time. It really is. I think my biggest stress reduction and anxiety management is... Don't be afraid to curate your feed. Yeah. Don't be afraid to block people who yeah. are toxic. Oh, yes. Don't be afraid to cut people it off. It is necessary. If not. Cut the negativity out of your life. Mm-hmm. It's great to be well-meaning when it comes to being open to other points of view. But if that's what you need to do, you need to find yeah, a, a different source of information. Yeah, don't sacrifice yourself. Yeah. Don't, don't just read whatever your racist old uncle is posting online no. because you're just going to end up frustrated yeah. and, and pissed off. So, That's what the hide button is for. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to exactly. unfriend Seriously. him. Just hide him. Turn it off and walk away if you yes. need a break. Stephanie's already said a lot of the things I was thinking, but like watch silly TV. Watch watch old movies like I do, yes. TCM. and The but, baking show. Yeah. Yeah, the baking loves. show. There's so many things. Get a hobby, bake, make art, mm-hmm. make music, record a podcast. Record a podcast. So much oh. of what we do, yeah. the reason that we're doing this is yeah. it's healthy for us to yes, have a is. way to vent without directly talking about the issues at hand yeah 
but we are still sort of engaging in discussions about our government mm-hmm. and and things that we're passionate about, like politics. We're just not talking about the current yeah. political regime because yeah. it's it's too much for us. And yeah. there are other podcasts out there that are dedicated to it and they're yeah. doing it better. So, But I hope that the way that we're doing it is also helpful for you, yeah. for the listeners to be able to hear what we're saying and understand that even though we're talking about something that happened in like 1874, <laughs> it's still, I mean, relatable we bring it up a lot. Relatable to today. Yeah, yeah. it's oh, so relatable. Man. There's so many correlations. So many so parallels. But like, you guys can do this too. Yeah, anyone can do this. And, you know, at the very least, you can send us an email or record a voice message for our next mini Yeah. Sound. The last thing I want to mention is that you have to realize that while the problems of the world are too big for you to tackle on your own, there are plenty of small things that you can do to make a difference. The biggest one and the easiest, well, maybe not easiest, but a great way to, to take control is to go vote. Oh, yes. It feels so good to go vote express your opinion behind that ballot box and mm-hmm. know that it means something. And you have plenty of time now to get registered if you're not That's already. True. Go to a march. Go yeah. to a protest. Yeah, make a sign. Make a get sign. Get your creative juices flowing. Volunteer somewhere. Volunteer, yeah. Volunteer. I love volunteering. Make a donation to a charity, mm-hmm. something that you feel strongly about, yeah. whether it's ACLU, Planned yeah. Parenthood, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Or there's local charities. Just yeah. anything that you feel strongly about, like, send them some money. Like, send them, or, or volunteer volunteer for them if you can if it's something local like just do something to make the world less shitty is really good for self-care yeah it makes me feel better when i volunteer so we want to hear from you guys we want to know why you're stressed yeah why you're depressed why yeah. you're why you're having anxiety Why you're going to the bodega once <laughs> a week for lollipops and then how you're three times a week what your favorite way of managing anxiety and stress and under the current administration is we'd love to hear from you yes we want to know how you stay sane in an insane world <laughs> we need to hear from we you we need to hear from you by saturday march 16th at the latest so that we have time to organize all of the responses that we get and put together a lovely episode to listen to. I love listener mail yes. and, and voice messages. Yeah. Send us an email, slip into the DMs, yeah. but please do, if you're able, record a voicemail and send it to us because that's so much fun for... It's it, the best. Yeah. And it's less talking for us. Yeah, less talking. <laughs> and it's just nice to hear people's voices. I yeah. think it's very intimate. I love it. it makes me happy. Yeah. And you want to make me happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> So thanks, guys. Uh, Don't forget to please rate, review, and subscribe. Yes. Tell a friend if you you know somebody that likes this kind of stuff. Make a Mm -hmm. (laughs) t-shirt. And follow us on the socials, Beyond Reproach Pod, Facebook, Insta, and Twitter. And uh, do the right thing. Send us an email. Do the right thing. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.